We're up to part seven of our conversation with Richie Fiore. I'm John Bowden from Rock History Music. With the, the first album with uh, Chris Hillman and JD, another project that I really, really enjoyed an awful lot. Thank you. How did, how did that come together? That was David Geffen's idea. Really? Uh, yeah, I had gone to, uh, um, you know, when, when Poco released Good Feeling to Know, and I mean, we were really on a mission at the time. Um, to create an AM record. I wanted Richie Pottler at the time to produce the record. Richie was, uh, he produced Three Dog Night and uh, Steppenwolf and, and great, great musical mind. And I, I loved Richie. Uh, but uh, the record company uh, decided they didn't want to work with him. And so we went on a mission to find a, another producer and Jack Richardson, who became just a, I mean, just a wonderful guy, man. I mean, Jack, Oh, you know, he did two of our records, and uh, I love Jack. He was a sweet guy, man. And um, when Good Feeling to Know came out, we were sure, we were so sure that it was going to be a smash hit that um, um, when it wasn't, it was like a sucker punch. Came out at the same time that Take It Easy came out. And I remember we were driving across New York, man. We were playing at every S U N Y there was in the in, in, in the state, State University of New York at. <laughs> and when you know we had the radio on, we were listening for it. We knew it'd been released, and we knew it was gonna. It was just gonna be a hit. And man, I remember bingo, man. Here's um, traveling down a road, trying to listen to my load gone, and it's like, oh. so I came back to L.A. and. And I talked to Geffen, and I said, David, you know, uh, I don't think this is going to happen. You got any ideas? Because we had, he, had, he had helped Poco in, in a couple other things along the way. And um, uh, he said, well, listen, let's just get together with J.D. and Chris, and let's put together another Crosby, Stills, and Nash. And I thought, I've been doing this for six years, and that's all it takes, just get together with these guys? And so... David put it together. You know, obviously, you know, he was big on, uh, he was big on JD, a songwriter for the Eagles, who David had been, um, you know, involved with. And, uh, of course, Chris, well, he said Chris is looking for something to do. And so, you know, it, it's perfect. And, um, and you know what? Uh, I knew Chris. I didn't know JD very well. Um, but it was like, you know, let's get together with them, put a band together. And so, of course, that was, um, you know, when, uh, Jim Gordon, one of the greatest rock and roll drummers ever. Poor guy, man. I mean, my goodness sakes alive. But Jim, at the time that he played with us, had three sets of drums going around L.A. where he would go from session to session to session. He was just like the, the guy. Paul Harris, Chris had played with him, you know, Manassas and all. And, and uh, Paul, just one of the... He just a dynamic keyboard player, and I had always wanted a key. At the end of the day in Poco, when I left Poco, I had wanted a keyboard player, and it was just I uh, was having trouble even getting, you know, you know, through to the guys. And so we got Paul, and then, of course, Al Perkins, the whole story I told you with Chris, saying, hey, man, there's the guy, man. This guy plays a banjo, he plays dobro, he plays steel, he plays guitar. And I'll tell you what, Al, is a, he's a great dude. He, he is a great musician, probably one of the most underrated, you know, guitar musicians there is. But um, so that was the, you know, that was the beginning of it. But David put it together and then we brought together, you know, the, the rest of the musicians. But it was David. Problem was, man, it didn't work like Crosby, Stills and Nash. I mean, David, Stephen and Graham got together at Mama Cass's house and they're playing and they're enjoying each other and they're, 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 they're connecting on a different level. We connected on a piece of paper, you know, bang, 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 bang. Here's, you know, well, let's get Chris and JD and, and Richie and man put together a band. What looks good on paper sometimes doesn't really pan out to be what it looks like it should. And it has nothing to do, again, with friction. Oh, man, those guys couldn't stand Richie. He'd become a Christian and this and that and the other. And but it had nothing to do with that. My leaving the band had nothing to do with Chris and JD and their musical talent and the way that we, the way that we made music together. It had to do with my marriage was breaking up. And I had to make a choice, man. Do I want my family or do I want to 
play music. See, because I thought, man, my lights in, in uh, my my name in lights was what what life was all about. Well, let me tell you, it wasn't about that. It was about you know what do you want? And that's when the Lord pulled that carpet up from under me and said, you know, it's time we talk about some stuff, you know, and. Um, it, 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 it got down to where, you know, I had to, I had to make a decision. We recorded the second Souther Hillman Puree record right up here at Caribou Ranch, which is just a few miles up the road from where I live even right now. Caribou and, Ranch is just a few miles from you? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. The Caribou Ranch that, I'm, that, that we recorded our second record at with, you know, Jimmy obviously sold it a long time ago, uh, two years ago, but man, it was the place in the day. A lot of people came through at the time, you know, it was a destination recording place. And my house at the time was probably five miles from Caribou Ranch. That's where, you know, I was where Nancy and I lived at the time we were separated. But um, anyway, I got to oh, tell you, I love Falling in Love. I love that tune. Oh, thank you. I love, oh. love, love, love that song. I have to tell you something about that song, which was on the first record. But on the second record, I don't even remember recording it. I mean, we're recording with Tommy Dowd. We're at Caribou Ranch. And my wife and I are separated, man. And it's like my mind is not into this. And so I, I can't, you know, I mean, even the songs, you know, I mean, I didn't really feel like I as much as I could uh, at the time. But anyway, going back to Fallen in Love, um, Richie Podler did produce that record. I finally got Richie in, 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 involved with us. <clears throat> And um, we're working on that particular song, and we can't come up with a hook. We can't come up with a with a not not a not a chorus hook, but an intro hook. And Richie, who was a classical guitar player, you know, and he's a crazy guy, man. He he pulls down as we're struggling out there trying to put it together. One day, he pulls down the little talk back and says, "Hey guys, I I I." I got, I got an idea. Come on, come on, come out and show it to you, you know? And so he came out and he man, it's like, that's it, man. So that was his idea, and it, it, oh, it was perfect, you know? It was just a great, uh, great deal. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. And buy a t-shirt, help support our channel. Link in the description of this video. I'm John Bowden from Rocky Stream Music. Mm -hmm.